To make better renders, you often need better assets, which is why I created Polygon, a library of models, textures, and HDRs that work in any 3D software. Join for free at polygon.com. With our donut now finished and looking the way we want it, we can now start animating it. So you might remember from the first part, this is the animation that we are going for. We want to have it slowly rotate and then pick up speed into a quick spin and then go back to the start. Um, so it's, it's an opportunity to learn about keyframing essentially. So first uh, let's delete the plane because we no longer need that. That was just so that we could uh, play with lighting and see how it looks. Um, we're going to have it operate just in a, you know, suspended in midair. Uh, so first of all, let's move our camera to be sort of front on to it like this. Okay, so um, there's a couple of ways you could like, you know, you could move it, position it, you know, like this. It's a little bit fiddly and then you'd have to like zero out these. I find it easiest if I want it to be like exactly front onto something. Uh, go to the front view, number pad one, or by clicking up there. Then uh, go to view, align view, align active camera to view or the hotkey control alt number pad zero. And you can see that we are now, it has snapped our camera to the exact location that we were at, which was front view. So now you should see that our camera, assuming our camera is selected, it should show 90 degrees, zero, zero. Okay, lovely. Cool. So um, now let's, uh, let's rotate our camera, our donut to position our camera. So if we were to rotate this, you can see that's, yeah, these objects are just moving independently of themselves because there is nothing that we've told Blender to say that this should be attached to this. Um, oh, and I've got this set to the wrong way. Um, you could, if you wanted to, you know, like rotate them all like this, but then they've each got their own individual like rotation amounts and it would just be a nightmare to animate with. So instead, let's, let's tell Blender that these are all linked. So I'm gonna select my icing, okay? And then I'm going to select a last, holding down shift, the, the object which is gonna be the parent, the, the one that it's, it's sort of based on. So that's my base, so icing, then shift select the base, and then I'm gonna hit control P for parent, okay? And there's a bunch of options here. Normally the ones you want is either that one or this one, depending on if you hit uh, object and then it just like moves around, it usually means like your rotation or your scale was not applied. But um, if it is applied, then object should work, but otherwise keep transform. Okay, so now that that's done, I can select my donut and the icing will move it with it. And I can select my icing and the donut underneath it will stay stationary. But you can see that there's a dotted line that connects between that and the base, just to show that it is parented to that thing. Okay, so uh, now I need to do the same for these balls because that was not part of the geometry nodes. So select the balls, holding down shift. And then, I mean, you could parent it to the base, but it actually make more sense to parent it to the icing. So control P, object because that means that if for whatever reason I wanted to move the icing, like, I don't know if it was in the wrong place slightly, or I wanted to move it up a little bit, um, I wouldn't have to reposition these balls. So it's called object hierarchy or parent hierarchy. So when you've got like a, like a mech or a robot or something, you might have like lots of elements, like a, a costume and some plate of armor and then like a hat. And you wanna have the hat that's like parented to the plate of armor and then the plate of armor that's parented to the mesh and then the mesh that's parented to the... So then when you move things, it actually makes sense and you don't have to like think and go, oh, this should be parent, you know. So anyways, that's just a long way of showing you how to do parenting. Okay, so. Looking through my camera view with uh, number pad zero, or just by clicking the little camera icon, um, I want to rotate my donut. So I wanna rotate it towards me. So that would be the X axis like this. I can also just uh, up here in your properties. Uh, yeah, just add, increase the uh, angle amount. And we're gonna go for something around about like 60. Yeah, what? Yeah, let's go 60. Okay, 60 degrees. Okay, and now if I was to rotate this, that looks, Pretty good, haha, <laughs> nice. Okay, now you can see that we are in widescreen mode. Um, and you can see that might be good if you were rendering a Blu-ray of a donut spinning or a, a movie or something like that. Um, it makes sense that that's the default, but we are gonna do, we're gonna commit a sin. We're gonna use vertical mode, <gasps> shock and horror. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny that like, Remember like when vertical video started, like people started recording video in vertical mode, there was like this huge pushback against vertical video, like everyone hated it. And now because of TikTok and Instagram and uh, what else, YouTube shorts, like vertical is its own format now um, because a lot of people now watch video on their phone in vertical mode. So it doesn't really matter that it's vertical. 
But anyway, it's just kind of funny that we've all just like forgotten that we used to hate vertical video. <laughs> Some people I'm sure still hate it, but whatever. Um, okay, so we could change from widescreen mode to anything else by changing the resolution of our output up here. So the camera resolution is defined by your output for when you actually uh, render here. So if I was to adjust this, you can see that I'm changing the, uh, the aspect ratio of my camera. I could go ultra widescreen. All right, so what I'm gonna go for is uh, 1080 because that's what that one is now. And then if I made this 1920, that would be an exact, is it exact? Depends on the phone, but a, a vertical mode. Um, I don't necessarily want completely vertical mode. I'm gonna go 1440, which is a, I don't know, semi-squarish looking one because I find that if you make it just like 1920, then you end up with a lot of empty space up here and a lot of empty space down there. I don't wanna go for that entirely. Okay, and the next thing to decide is your focal length of your camera. So um, just to make this a little easier to understand, I'm just gonna quickly add in, hey, let's add in a monkey, just so that we know what we're talking about here. Um, when you're working with a scene and you've got you know lots going on, um, but we don't in this case, but we've got a donut which is gonna be spinning, so things will look uh, different depending on where we are. Um, we could, for example, whoops, change how it looks to the camera um, by changing the focal length. So if I went for a really wide focal length, like let's say like 24 millimeters or something. Now, when I bring this in like this, you can see that this, uh, I mean, actually maybe it would make more sense if I just rotate this a little bit towards the way that it, it was before. Now you can see it's almost like that, uh, like that skater cam, like a uh, fisheye lens kind of thing. So the things that are closest to the camera look like really distorted, like they're kind of like wide. And then the things that are not that far behind it look a lot further away. Um, it can look like distorted, but depending on what you're going for, it might actually look good for what, what you want. Um, and you can see that I actually have clipping that's happening pretty severely. And uh, that's because my clipping amount is too too high for the start. So I'll just add a zero in front of it and now I can move the camera much closer. Okay, so that is one look, right? Now the alternative is you could have the camera really far away and then you could use a large focal length. And now you can see that it's kind of flattened out, right? Like it's hard to actually tell like without lighting, let's say with all these here, like where the objects are in relation to each other, right? Like this monkey is much further forward than this one behind it. But because we're so far away, you can't see the depth. So when you're thinking of a focal length, just think a high focal length means I'm gonna flatten it. I'm gonna compress the depth so that basically things just look really, really flat. Like I could go really flat, move the camera even further away. And now all those monkeys basically look the same height, even though that the same distance, although they're much, much further away from each other. Um, and then if you wanna exaggerate it and make things yeah, like a fisheye lens, like a skater cam kind of thing, you would use a smaller one, right? You just have to move the camera once you've changed, obviously, because it now has to be closer to fill the frame. In this case, I'm gonna make it something in between. I'm just gonna make it a 40. So the default is 50, but as it rotates around, I wanna kinda of add, yeah, there's a little bit of depth to it, right? So I'm going with a 40 focal length. Delete these monkeys, because I no longer need them. I don't know if it was even helpful for the demonstration, but whatever. Um, all right, and now let's move my camera. By the way, here's a little tip. If you want to uh, see, you know, what is the center of your frame with your camera selected, if you go to composition guides, and then there's one here for center. You can see I now get like a little crosshair in the middle there. Um, you can also use like rule of thirds if you want to see the rule of thirds, which wouldn't make sense for something where you've just got one single object, just keep it in the center. Diagonal, I don't know. Who uses diagonal? Look at that, it's a real cross crosshair now. Um, anyways, okay, so now I'm gonna move my camera in a little closer. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then I'll just rotate this back to what it was before, which was around about 60. Okay, lovely. So um, with lighting, I mean, look, we're gonna do the lighting later on. Um, we're just gonna look in solid view and do some animation, okay. So animation and playback can actually be done anywhere. So we're in layout mode, we've got 3D view. We could play our animation. So down here, this is the timeline, which we haven't really talked about yet. Um, but you can see we've got a, a timeline, which I can click up here, click on that little black part, and then you can click and drag across frames and you can hit spacebar to play your animation. And nothing is happening because obviously we haven't got any keyframes, any motion yet. Um, but you can see we are playing back an animation. Now, a quick point about playback, okay? So playback is defined by 
your frames per second because these are frames here. You can see it's not seconds, it is frames. So um, if you go to your output settings here, you can see your frame rate. So if I wanted a 10 second animation at 24 frames per second, that means I would need 240 frames. So uh, you can see the start and end frames here. That is the number of frames in your animation. So if you were to hit render animation, it would render all the frames from 100 to uh, 250. So if I wanted 10 seconds, I would set that to 240. Um, so uh, the, the the playback speed, this is a, you know, the, the, the frame rate that you choose. I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's, it's almost like a religious war. You remember when uh, The Hobbit came out, uh, they came out with 48 frames a second, which is double the standard for cinema, which is 24. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. Um, 24 used to be sort of the standard, then like a lot of camcorders and stuff came out at like, like TV was 30 uh, or 29.97. That's a whole other thing. They, <laughs> the American market added in color and then they had to find a way to fit that into these cathode CRT things. Very crazy, but sort of like 30. Um, and then there's like now 60. YouTube is now, you can show 60 frames a second. So again, some people love that, some people hate it. My final donut animation, I actually used 60 frames a second because I find for like animations, it kind of makes it feel like, larger than life, like it's kind of like, whoa, like hyper real. It's kind of like popping out of the screen. Only downside to that is you need to render twice as many frames as 30 frames a second. So I wouldn't actually necessarily recommend it. Um, so we're gonna use 30 frames a second, which is sort of standard for what you would get on a phone or a camcorder or anything like that today. Um, camcorder feels so old school to say camcorder, but a camera, you know, DSLR or anything, it's usually around about 30. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go 30. So if we were to, uh, if we wanted to do an animation, uh, we could do it anyway. So we could put, put our timeline, a little slider thing back on frame one. And then if I want to add a keyframe for my donut here, I could hit I. So that is in I for insert keyframe, which is not the uh, most obvious <laughs> keyframe choice. It could be K, that would make more sense to me, but it's I. Um, and then you could say, what, what sort of keyframe are you using it for? Are you doing it for the location, the scale or the rotation? I've never used any of these, to be honest. Um, the one I'm looking for is, in this case, I'm just gonna say location. I'm just doing this to show you something. Um, okay, so if I wanted, uh, let's say three seconds of animation, I'm at 30 frames a second, three times 30 would be 90 frames. So I would then move to where I want the action to end, and then I would move my object to that point, and then say I again, and then say location. Then if I went back to the start here, which you can do by hitting shift left arrow, and then hit space bar, you can see that we are playing back. Haha, ha, lovely. So 30 frames a second, if we were to count this and go, okay, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, what's happening? Why is this not playing back at 30 frames a second? That is because Blender is trying to show you everything on your screen. And we've actually got quite a lot of complex detail here. You can see in the top left-hand corner, we've got frames per second, and it's lighting up as red to show you that there is actually frames that it's not, it's not playing back at its true speed. It can only render on my screen 12 frames a second. You might be able to get this down if you were to like turn off your subdivisions and like make things a little bit lighter. Oh, I can actually. So it was just that, it was that. Um, but if I did wanna keep that, um, and I had a lot going on in my scene, which you often do, if you wanna play something back at its true speed, and not have to go through and like change you know everything in your scene. You would just go to playback and then say sync play every frame to frame dropping. So now it will play it back at its proper speed, even though it, it'll start skipping frames in order to meet the requirements of playing back at 30 frames per second. Um, so there you go, a little bit about playback and how that all uh, works. Something else you might want, if you are new to animation and frames don't really make sense, you want to uh, use seconds, you can also say view, show seconds, or just hit control T whilst your mouse is over here. And then you can see it's showing you actual seconds. You can go like, okay, I want three seconds of animation. I can get it to th uh, three seconds, right? Um, but generally you just want to render with, uh, show, show your frame count. Um, I don't know, I find it easier to work with in seconds. Um, anyways, okay, cool. So we wanna have a donut that uh, that spins around. So first of all, I'm gonna position my donut to be where I want my, cause I'm gonna make this loop, which introduces some complications, but hey, 
That's what the tutorial is for. Make, make it interesting. So um, it's going to start at frame one. And it's going to be about this point. So this is where the video is going to start. It's where the donut is sort of looking uh, interesting. So I'll be at about there. And then I'm going to hit I and then say insert location at rotation. Okay, then I'm going to go up to, I mean, we're going to make it spin fast at the end to do like a, like a really quick spin. Um, and I'm going to do that around about here to 10 is where it's going to start to speed up. So this is where sort of the, uh, like what's interesting to the donut has, has stopped showing. And then it starts to show the back of it, right? So I don't want to show like a slow pan around the back. I want it to like speed up from this point. So now I'm going to hit I again and hit rotation. Okay, so now we play that back. Go from here to there. So is it doing frame dropping? Yes, it is. Okay, so this is the true playback speed. Okay, oh, I also want it to be um, 10 seconds of animation at 30 frames. That means I want to change my end frame count, which you can do there or over here. Set that to 300. Uh -huh. Also, if you just want to like, instead of having to scroll in and out here to see all your frames, if you just say home whilst your cursor is over here, um, same as if you want to see uh, your entire scene, it's home. Um, yeah, then it'll should, actually, did it show me all the frames? That's odd. Huh, I've never seen that before. Okay, usually when you say home, it like shows you the exact timeline view of everything, but in this case, it didn't. Oh, maybe it's because of the keyframes. Maybe if I don't select keyframes. Eh, anyway, I think Blender's changed that. I think it used to always show the timeline. Small thing, doesn't matter. All right, let's move along. Now, in this part, I want to do like a, like a spin. And actually, you can see at the start here, like it moves really slowly. Then it moves fast in the middle, and then it starts to slow down again. So this is because these keyframes that it has added is a Bezier keyframe. So it's trying to blend into the next one, and because there's nothing here, it's just starting slowly and then ending slowly. So to see all this, it is better visualized in the animation uh, workflow up here. Work, workspace is what it's called. All right, so it's got a 3D view over here and another one over here. I prefer to actually make this... Uh, Graph editor. Mm -hmm. So graph editor um, will show you the the keyframes, but with like the Bezier curve information to show you where it's slowing down and speeding up. So to move around here, I'm holding down control and then middle mouse button. And it allows me, if I move it like all the way up to the right, I can sort of zoom in. And then to the left, I can sort of like pinch the, uh, the it's like sort of zooming out on the keyframes. And then I can go down and it can, it's just a, actually a really easy way to quickly see things. And then you can just say home if you want to see everything. Um, that's probably easiest, just hit home. Okay, now we're actually only animating on our Z axis. But when you add a keyframe for the rotations, you're also doing it for the X and the Y. And we don't actually need that. So I'm going to delete those. So with my mouse over these, I'm going to hit X and then this one as well. So we've just got the Z rotation. Okay, so we can see that it is... Uh, that's how it's happening. Okay, great. Let's complete our animation before we start cleaning up this. So I want it to go to here. And then this is where I want it to start speeding up and do like an extra spin, an extra two spins, in fact. So uh, let's go up to... Okay, so this is the degrees on the left-hand side. And then this is the keyframes on the uh, up top right. Oh, and by the way, I didn't even explain what this is down here. This is your, what is it, action sheet? Is that what it's called? Dope sheet. Dope sheet. Sounds like what you'd get for a criminal possession of drugs. <laughs> Dope sheet. Um, okay. Um, I thought it was called action sheet. But anyways, it's just like simple beat, like uh, little dots, like keyframes, like what we had before on the timeline. Um, but this one up here, your graph editor will show you the actual motion of where it's blending in between keyframes. So I generally like to work with the uh, the graph editor. Okay, so I want it to do, um, let's do another rotation from here. So I'm going to, I mean, I could try to like rotate it up here, but it's actually easier to work. Um, I find it easier to work like this. So I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna add another keyframe up here by hitting control and then just left clicking. Did that not work? Right clicking, sorry. Okay, it's control and right click. That'll add another keyframe where you've got your cursor. So I could go like this and add keyframes everywhere if I want to. Okay, so I want it to basically speed up here. It's done one revolution. I actually want it to do two revolutions. So I want it to move up again to around about here. 
Now, lining this up would actually be very difficult. It is very difficult. Um, so we've got something that's starting at minus rotation, and then it's going up to here. And I want this to loop, right? So I want it to end at the exact point where it should join with the previous one. So I can actually find out the exact degree rotation for this by uh, selecting a keyframe and then hitting N in my properties to bring up this. So here I can see the value of this. So this is starting at the start of my animation. It is starting its rotation at minus 34.5 degrees. So let's just make that an easy number. Let's go minus 30, okay? Something a little easier to start. Yeah, let's go minus 40. Minus 40. So it starts where it's a little bit... Mm, do we want it? Minus 50? Yeah, let's go minus 50. Why not? Let's go minus 50, okay. And then up here, so how do I calculate? So how many revolutions, minus 50 to two revolutions, we can do some math, okay? Everybody loves math. It's exciting. I hated math in high school. My dad's actually like a maths professor. He had like, did like his thesis on maths and science. I was just so disappointed that I failed, <laughs> almost failed at math and science. <laughs> oh, anyways, math. Okay, let's do some math. So we wanted to, to do a, from minus 50, we wanted to do two revolutions. Okay, so we would type in here in this value, 360 for one revolution plus 360 for a second revolution minus its original start at 50, which brings us to 670 degrees. So then the keyframe value here, because we just sort of like arbitrarily like dropped it wherever our cursor was. Um, I want to set this to be, um, you could set it to 300, but actually because we want it to loop, it would actually make sense for it to start off the timeline, which would be 301, 301 frames. So if we played this back now, it should be framed. Okay, so we gotta stop the uh, the slow speed up at the start, we'll get to that. But let's just see how this looks. It should spin twice, and now it's back at the start. Haha. -ha. So it, our plan has worked. There is no like jutting cut where it stops at the start. Sorry, before it, where it, um, I don't know, it jumps from when it goes to the end to the start basically. It, it is actually the same frame, which is exactly what uh, we wanted. But we want to fix this, uh, this speed issue. So it starts basically, it's stationary because its movement is so slow because of this Bezier handle here. So what I wanna do is I wanna make it like from here in the timeline. Can I do a, no, I can't do a, uh, I was trying to do an annotation. You can't do an annotation in the dope sheet apparently. Um, from here in the timeline to here, I wanna make the, anim the motion look basically constant. So I'm going to grab this Bezier handle here and I'm just gonna scale in. So scale it all the way in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here, but not for this entire point, because I want this part to actually do smooth, just this handle. I'm gonna scale that almost all the way in as well. Okay, so now if I play it, it should be basically constant from here to here. You could change the handle to a vector or something like that. I'm just gonna keep it like that, that's fine for me. Okay, then I want this. Let's actually move this down so that it's actually the same. Because if I go like this, you can see that there'll be like a jump from that amount of rotation to like the next bit. You can see like it, it, there's a bit of a jump there. So I want this handle to be basically in line with this blue line over there. And I'm dragging that over there so that there is now like a slow buildup to the next part. Ha ha, that's starting to look good. So it's a slow buildup. Okay, and then it starts to speed up. It's faster, faster. There we go. So it's basically almost like a vertical bit here. In fact, I could just rotate this because then this will actually like, rather than it going back all the way to zero in terms of rotation, it should actually be um, keeping with basically this line. Like if you draw drew a line across there, we should try to get that same line here with this handle roughly. Okay, something like that. And I might just scale that out a little bit. And then I'll take this and I'll scale this one out a little bit. So it's like, where do you want the motion? Do you want it to be like here or do you want it mostly here? Ah, there we go. That's pretty good actually. I like that. Just playing it back. It's pretty cool. This was actually to decide this, this animation because I'm creating some, uh, some donuts for uh, an NFT project. I'll show you at the end what, uh, what some of them look like. Um, 
but uh, yeah, this this idea because we we're like trying to like figure out like okay, what's the best way to make it spin? Because if you have it just like constantly spinning, it's really boring when it gets to the the, the back part of the donut. And um, so yeah, I was like working with a contractor to like figure out you know how how should it actually look? And he came up with this idea where it like it starts to speed up at the end of it and then does this like revolution. And I thought like that's really cool. And then we made it so like some bits like fly off the donut as well. That's kind of an extra thing. Um, but anyways, that is pretty good. So that is the basics of animation. So we are going to get into uh, rendering uh, later on. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. So go ahead, click here on the screen, and I'll see you in the next part.